Hey guys, we are going to continue building our dashboard and in this video we are going to work on the table of the users how to list and manage our users in the system this is the data grid or the table of the users it is responsive you can see it is adapted to the screen and we can sort or order these users using any of these columns or fields for example by the name and we can filter or search by any of these fields let's search for example by email and here's the names match the search criteria and from here we can clear our filter from here we can navigate through the pages and change the number of records per page from here now let's try to edit one of these users for example let's change the rule for this user and let's save it is uploading then successfully saved and let's disable this user when we commit the change by clicking outside this active we can see the button save activated as well so let's send this change to the server it is uploading then saved successfully in our database so let's get started now our users component is empty in our another version of the application and let's go to this component here inside the dashboard and let's add here box from Material UI let's import it here and let's add some styling height 400 and the width 100% and let's add the title the text of the title is manage users and let's change the variant of the typography variant is h3 and the component is h3 as well and let's align the text to the center and give it margin from top 3 and from bottom 3 as well now let's add our data grid this component is advanced component from material UI so we need to install special package from material UI for that let's install it it is x data grid now let's import it and let's add the props of this component first the prop is the columns these columns specify the fields and the rows are the data of the grid we need here to extract our users from our global state using our hook use value let's import this hook and let's use this use effect in the first render we will check if there is no users we will get the users from the server using the action or function get users we need to pass it the dispatcher let's import it now let's pass the users to the rows as the data of the grid and let's create our columns we are going to use use memo from react to remember the value it is an array of objects every object represents one of the fields the first field is photo url of the user these are the fields and they must match the names of the fields of the user document here 
these fields names header name is the title that will be shown on top of the data grid let's call it avatar and let's give it with 60 pixels let's copy it six times for the other fields the second field is for name the title is name and let's give it 170 width email 200 for the width and the rule let's give it 100 for the width active the width 100 as well and one for the date and let's give it 200 width and the last one for the id of the user and let's give it 220 now let's pass them here data grid component needs id for every field so it can manage it easily we can add it statically here for every field in our case we've already have a dynamic id for every user so let's add here dynamic id for every row this is the prop responsible for this id we will receive the row and we will specify our id it is underscore id and let's save and check and here is our table with the user's information but here the avatar is only the link of the photo and it is also sortable and filterable and we don't need that so we need to add some changes in our configuration for the avatar and as well for this active we need it to be that icon check or x and the rule we need it to be editable as well and in a drop down menu and we need to format the date here so let's go back and work on that let's start by the avatar we need to add here render cell we will receive the params from the data grid and in these parameters we will receive the information of the row so let's retain avatar from material UI and the source of this avatar it will be params.row dot photo url and let's change the sortable to be false filterable to be false as well and let's change the rule let's add here type single select menu and the options of the menu we are going to pass it in an array they are basic editor and admin and let's add here editable to be true now let's update active type is boolean and editable to be true and let's format the date here we are going to use moment package let's import it And we will pass it the field created at using params to throw. We will format it to be four digits for the year, two digits for the month, two digits for the day, 24 hours, minutes, and seconds. And let's save and check. Here we can see the avatar of the user. And we can see the rule in a drop down menu and it is editable and the active icons and we can also edit it and the date format is nicer now and here it is not sortable using the avatar now and when we filter or search we can see the avatar is not available here we can search and filter by only these fields but we can see here the rows per page is a big number we need to change it to be smaller so let's go back and change this page size we need to create a state for that 
let's call it page size and set page size and the default value is 5 rows and let's go to the grid component and let's specify the options for the rows they are 5, 10 and 20 and let's pass here our state page size and on page size change we will receive the new number and we will set our state page size using this new number and let's save and check here we can see rows per page is 5 by default and they are here 5 only and if we change to 10 all of our rows is here because we only have 6 users so our functionality is working correctly now we need to change the background of the rows to be grey and we need to add some gaps between the rows like it looks here in our finished product it looks nicer here so let's work on this style we are going to add spacing here we will receive the parameters of the grid and we will retain an object and inside this object we are going to change the spacing if it is the first item we are going to make the spacing from top 0 otherwise it will be 5 and the bottom if it is the last one we are going to make it 0 otherwise it will be as well 5 and now let's change the background color we need to update the class of the row we can get the class name of the row using this way we will pass here the grid classes from the new bucket and we will specify the row this will extract the row class name and here we will change the background color let's check the mode of the theme if it is the light mode we are going to use the color gray from material UI colors with the shade 200 otherwise we are going to use the shade 900 and let's save and check now here is our background for every row and at the first row there is no gap from top and the last row there is no gap from bottom now let's work on actions we are going to add these icon buttons or fab from material UI so first let's add the actions field here it is a special field with type actions so the field name is actions and the title actions type is actions and we are going to render a new component we are going to call it users actions so let's create this component inside our users folder And let's add here the default structure for now let's save it and go back to import it here we are going to pass it these parameters from the grid so let's pass them here this will pass the data of the row and we need extra state to specify which row is active now let's create the state here and call it row id and set row id the default value is null and let's pass them here and we need to add this state here as dependency for use memo because if there is a change in the row we need to render our buttons and let's save and check now now it is just showing the text So let's go now to the user's actions component and add our button. Let's add here box from material UI. And let's give it some styles. Margin from all sides 1. Position relative because we need that for our loading. And let's extract our props here. The params row id and set row id and let's add here some states 
one state for the loading the default value is false and another state for success and the default value is false as well and now let's add our buttons here if success is it true we are going to show the check icon otherwise we are going to show the save icon so let's add here fab from material i this is for the success button we are going to use a check from material i icons let's import it and let's add the props here color primary and let's add some styles width 40 and height the same background color we are going to use a green from material eye colors with the shade 500 and let's add hover effect let's change the background color using a different shade of the green and let's copy it and paste it here for save icon let's change the icon to save And let's delete these backgrounds. Let's add here the prop disabled. We need all the icons to be disabled unless it is the active row. So we will check the row of this icon if it is the same as the active row. So it will be disabled if the row of this icon is not the active row or the state loading is true. Now let's add the loading icon only if the loading is true we'll use circular progress from material i and let's give it size 52 color green and position absolute it will be relative to the parent to minus 6 this we used here absolute and here in the parent relative lift minus 6 as well and the index 1 we are going to change this row id using our submit function so let's add our submit function here on a click on save icon and let's create it now It is async function because we are going to communicate with the server. Let's save here and go to our users component. We need to set this state of row ID. In this data grid component, we will add here on cell edit commit. When we commit the change, this will trigger this function. We will receive the params and we will set our row ID state to be the ID of this row. This will change here the disabled state of this icon. So let's check. Now all the icons in all the rows are disabled. But if we try to edit this row, let's change the rule. We can see that the save icon of this row enabled. If you wanted to see how is the loading looking, we can change this state to be true and save and check. And this is how it looks. And we can check the success as well by changing this state. And here's the icon of success. Now let's change it back to the default value and let's work on our function handle submit. First we need to create function in the server side to handle changing the status of the user. So let's go to the controllers of the user in the server side and let's add a new one here. Let's call it update status. We are going to use our function try catch and pass it our controller 
First, we will extract the role and active from the body of the request. And we will use user model to update the status of the user. User .find by ID and update. We will pass it the ID of the user we received in the link. And we will pass the new values of the role and the active. After updating the information of the user in the database, we are going to send a response to the client side with success it true. And the result, it will be the ID of the user. Let's update here the register and the login function here. Because we created them before we added the role and active to the user model. So here after creating the user, we will extract as well the role and the active. And we will pass them to the client as well here in the response. And the same for the login function. Let's extract them here. And pass them here. And let's add here check if the user is not active. If the admin disabled the user, we'll send back this response to the user with bad request status. Success false. And the message this account has been suspended. Try to contact the admin. Let's save here and go to the router of the user. We need to create route for this resource. Let's add it here. Using batch method. On the path update status. And we will receive here the user ID in the params. And let's pass here our function we've just created. And let's save and go back to the client. We need to go to the user's actions in the client side. And let's add here new action or function. Let's call it update status. We will receive the fields to be updated. And they will be the role and active state. And the user ID. And the dispatcher to pass it to our function fetch data. Here let's retain the promise of our function fetch data. We will pass it the URL. It will be the URL of the resource user on the server side. This is the URL of the user. It is the URL of the server plus the user. And let's add our specific URL of update status. Then we will add to this URL the user ID we need to update. Method is patch. And the body of the request is the updated fields, which is the role and active. And let's pass as well the dispatcher. Now let's save and go back to our component. We haven't applied until now any access rules in the server side. We will apply them in our next videos. Let's start here by activating the loading state and let's copy it to disactivate it. And in between them, we are going to add our functionality. We will extract the rule active and the ID of the user from our row inside the params. And we are going to use our action update status. We will pass it role and active in an object. This is the updated fields. And this is the user ID. And the dispatch, let's extract it here from our global state. Using our hook use value. And let's pass it here. After the promise has been resolved, we are going to check the result. If there is an object in the result, that means it is success. We will set the success to true. And we will clear the row ID by setting it to null. So let's save and check. 
let's update the status of this user let's disable it and let's save it was saved in our database but it was very quick we couldn't see the loading but if we refresh we can see that the status of the user has been updated it is now disabled and we can check the status of the user in our database let's refresh our users collection and here active is false and the rule is editor it is successfully updated and if you wanted to see the loading clearly we can add here delay by adding set timeout let's add it here after setting the loading to true and let's add delay one and a half seconds and let's drag all the other functionality inside it now let's save and check let's try to change here after committing we can see the save and now we can see the loading but if we try to update in the same row after the success the save button is not shown up it is still the success icon so let's go back and use here use effect and this use effect will depend on the row id we will check if the active row is the same row of this button and the success state is true we will set the success state to be false let's save and check again now you can see the save icon let's double check by editing again in the same row let's disable the user let's commit the change and now we can see our save icon let's make this account editor and let's save this updated information into our database and here we can see that rose miller is disabled let's try to log in using this account rose miller We can see that this account has been suspended. Try to contact the admin. That means this user can't log in into the system as long as it is disabled. Now let's log in using another account. We can see that this user is basic, but everyone can access the dashboard until we add the access rules into our server this will be in our next videos now let's make rose admin and let's enable this account and let's save and let's try to log in again now we are in after activating this account let's go to the dashboard and we can see she is admin let's delete this delay we don't need it anymore it was just for testing the loading and in our next video we are going to work on rooms table how to manage the rooms from here how to view update and delete these rooms so see you guys in our next video